Hello and welcome to another episode of my MotoGP 20 career mode and today we haven't actually got anything to do before we go into the race so we'll head straight into Phillip Island, I'll see you at the end of practice when I've set a lap to get into Q2. So then at the end of that free practice session we were 6 tenths ahead of Iagora in 2nd, Dennis Fodger in 3rd and Messiah down in 8th. If Messiah and Fodger could do a little bit worse that would help us because obviously we are still trying to beat Leopard in the Constructors Championship with only me and the team, so it's going to be pretty difficult because I think they've got 50 points over us. But yeah, without further ado, we'll head into qualifying and we'll try and take another pole position. So here in qualifying them all, I've got to go to the consumption check. I always press track engineer. So new set of soft softs, put it down to fuel, uh, four laps of fuel, if I can actually speak, and head onto the track. Right then, so we're heading up towards the line now. Phillip Island, it's not too long of a track. The lap time's about 1 minute 40-ish, I think based on the practice session obviously a lot of the corners are very fast and flowing and you can take them flat out like we just did with turn one here the doing corner and to the southern loop we actually probably have to hit the brakes for this one a little bit to be honest not too bad the game is warning me about two laps of fuel left i think we'll be okay at Mategi we rode on fumes and we still got pole position so i think we'll be all right not sure who that is in front of us going through the stoner corner i mean i said it with agora before actually i think it was cooney that we probably won't catch him, so I'm going to say it again here, but I feel like we won't. It's Barry Bolter's head, although the fact that we're now close enough to see his, uh, his name in some places does indicate we are catching him quite rapidly. I really don't want to catch him in this sector, though, because this will probably be the worst place to catch him. Although, in general, Phillip Island's not the... What's he doing? Seems like the AI are a little broken when I'm catching them. They just start running through the grass. I'm sure that's what Cooney did in the last episode when we are catching him up. We were so far behind him, we should never have caught him on the lap. But we are about to catch Barry Bolters here, actually. I mean, at least we didn't catch him through the sort of the hay shed section. But MG is not a great place to catch him either, I will be honest. Although we're still behind him on the power. It actually might not be too bad if he doesn't get in our way. If he can keep his corner speed up through these last couple of corners, he might be a bit of a help to us here. But he's got out of my way at least, so can't blame him for that. So out the last corner then. Trying to carry as much speed as we can onto the straight, coming up towards the line. What's it going to be? 138 1 then. So, yeah, that is around 140. So, we've not got much fuel left, so we'll get out of Barry Baltus's way since he got out of ours. We'll head back to the pits, and hopefully, that'll be good enough for pole position at the end of qualifying. So, then, that time was certainly good enough to get us on pole position by 1.4 seconds ahead of Russell Yamanaka in second. Dennis Fodger third, and Messiah's all the way down in ninth, but look at the field spread, they're so close. Messiah's going to be through to second probably by about turn two. I will stress I am using 120% AI, because obviously I know it doesn't look that way, because of how far I'm in front of the AI, but that's just how bad they are in Moto3 at the minute, unfortunately. Because I did have somebody ask me to turn up the AI, but obviously I can't, because it's already on the high setting. So down here on the grid then, Rosso Yamanaka in second, Dennis Fodger in third, I think it should be another pretty easy race. It seems like we've got the pace to probably get to the front. Well, we're already at the front, so make sure we keep the lead and then build a bit of a gap. But we could get a bit of, bit of a surprise like we did in the last episode where Finality just sort of came out of nowhere at Thailand. He, he started really far down, like ninth, and then he took the lead. And then I'm sure Fodger tried to get through as well, but we did manage to claw back past the pair of them. But we will now start the race, and hopefully we can make it another win. We need to get those points against the later parts. So then we've got pretty good at getting the decent starts now. We don't get the glitch starts, although we have got to watch out for Fodger because of course he is still on the front row. Wait for the lights to go out here. Lights and away we go. I think Fodger might have got a better launch. I think he let the clutch out earlier by the sounds of it. I'm guessing it wasn't Yamanaka. No, we've left him for well, we've left them all behind. I'm sure I can see Messia firing his way through already. Put back down to power mode one. So you don't want to be running out of fuel anytime. Although that does seem to be happening a lot to me lately. So we're going to the southern loop. Probably could have actually pushed it more than I did on my qualifying lap now that I think about it, but oh well. It was good enough for pole, so it doesn't really particularly matter. We've got two tenths of a second over Fodger. You can see Messia again in the background making moves, going round people. So he's going to be right up here. Fanati in sixth. I don't even know where he started, but I'm sure it wasn't sixth. We've ran a bit wide into the Honda hairpin, though. That could leave us open for an attack from Mino. We go into Siberia now. I believe it's named because it's really cold at that corner. I think that's why it's called that. Can't be too sure. 
So we've got almost half a second over Fodger now, so we have built out a little bit of a gap, even though we ran wide of the Honda Hairpin. Although I don't think it's actually called the Honda Hairpin anymore, but I'm always going to refer to it as such. Through Lukey Heights. As we, we plunge down the hill now, towards MG, although I think we've probably still slightly gone uphill when I said that. Through turn 10, flicking the bike over for 11. Bit of a wheelie. The bike does like to wheelie when you change in the direction, to be honest. It's the only time the front wheel ever is a problem. Obviously no anti-wheelie on these bikes. And the only time you ever sort of get the front coming up is when you change in the direction and you're on the power. So things like uh, S's at places like Masano, the first couple of corners, the front will come up there. And the last chicane at Assen, of course. So over the line then. We've got 9 tenths per second ahead of Fodger and Messiah is third, so Messiah is straight up there. So coming up towards the line then at the end of the second lap. 39-0, fast lap of the race, we've got 1.7 seconds to now Messiah behind us. So Messiah's overtaken his teammate, but they have a similar pace. So I don't think he'll be getting through, that was very risky there, one on the grass, didn't even mean to do that. But luckily we stayed up. So at the end of the third lap then, Lantinelli's just overtaken Fenati, that's going to help Fodger out. 38-5 on that lap, so now 3 seconds almost in the lead. So starting the penultimate lap then, 38.7 on that lap, we now have got 4.1 seconds ahead of Messiah, so we are really pulling away from them. So as we're about to start the final lap then, we've actually just gone over the line of not being able to have enough fuel, so into power mode zero we go, we are 4.7 seconds ahead of Messiah now. Through the last corner then now, we have a massive lead, I think we have almost 5 seconds ahead of Messiah at this point, it's been a very, very easy win. It's almost like Misano-esque, the dominance, and there wasn't even any crashes to help us out. So then, in the end, we won by 4.8 seconds, so just shy of 5 seconds, with Fodger in third place, a whole second back from Messiah. Look at the gaps, actually. They're very, very spread out here. One of the weird races where the gaps really are stretched, when really you'd think Phillip Island, if you've seen the 2018 race, you'll know what I'm on about, the AI, well, not the AI, the, in real life, the Moto3 riders, are always so close at this circuit, but then this one seems to have the biggest gaps between them, so it makes little sense, really. I think it basically just shows that Slipstream isn't enough of a, a factor in the game, when really it should be, and the, the, AI, the AI performance should be much closer. Fnati down in fifth, then, so Fodger's going to have definitely gained some points back on him. So yes, on the championship front, then, Fodger has now actually moved ahead of Fnati again, so those two continue chopping and changing. We've got 165 points ahead of Messia. In the Constructors' Championship, then, we can no longer win it. Uh, they've got a 61-point lead, so they've actually won the Constructors' Championship now, because I don't think 658 can catch that up either. So what, they build to take 45 out per race maximum. Actually, no, they can't win either. They are six points shy of being able to tie them. So Leopard Racing are your Constructors' Champions, then. So that might change my approach a little bit. Not that it was really ever going to happen that we were going to beat them in the Constructors with just me, but I sort of had a go. I mean, second in the Constructors is good enough. I mean, 658 could beat us yet, but I highly doubt it. So the last two races then are just for fun. So we'll head into Park Fermi and then the Career Hub, and then we'll head into Malaysia after that. Yeah, it's going to be difficult for them to overtake me since they've only managed to pretty much do it once the entire season at Jerez. Although there's still two more races they can win. But it looks like with the dominance we have, we'll probably win both of those as well. But Leopard, the Leopard guys don't look too happy considering they've just won the Constructors Championship because as a team, that's your main focus. Really, obviously, I know you want the, your rider to do well or one of your riders to win, but the teams is what gets you the most notoriety, I suppose. So then, as we always do, we gain 5,200 reputation points, which brings us up to 102,150. And we gained 6,151 credits, which brings us up to 87,237. Well, once again, there's no notifications, I suppose, at this point of the season. We're not really going to hire any technical staff with, like, a race to go. The bike's fully developed, and I think we've refused all the contracts that are going to get sent our way Moto3-wise. So there's nothing else to do but head into Malaysia now. So at the end of that session then, we were 2.2 seconds ahead of Suzaki in second. Can't even see Masir on the front page at all. Fourth for Fodger, ninth for Fanati, on Masir's tenth. But look how close the field is, the field is always pretty close. Except Suzaki, he seems to have a bit over everybody else, so maybe he'll qualify on the front row again. Hopefully he won't drop outside the points when he does this time. So we're here in qualifying then. And obviously Malaysia being a long track is why the gap is bigger than normal. I almost put a medium tyre on then as if we were doing a race. Maybe I should start doing that. 
it's hot, uh, trying to do qualifying on hard tyres just to make it a bit more fair. So we're getting ready then to start our lap in qualifying. And the AI uh, have never been particularly great at this circuit. This year they are the best they've ever been, I think, in the MotoGP class at least. Like, they've never been better at this circuit. But uh, And they were better in 19 than they were in 18, so they do get a little bit better at this circuit every year, and like they do in Austin, where they're just always as bad as ever. Well, actually, I think they probably have not They improve slightly, but the tracks where they're terrible, that's not enough. Because obviously they're really far off the pace, the tracks at Austin. And this track, for example. It's just the longer tracks, it seems. We've gone in a bit hot, though, into Turn 4. Though we should still be able to recover from that, so it's not the end of the world. Yeah, it just seems like maybe the longer tracks they're not so good at. Although, at Bruno, Bruno's a pretty long track, and they're very good at Bruno. Uh, Valencia's quite short, they're quite good at Valencia. I've absolutely messed up that entire section, so that's probably have messed up my lap quite a bit, so I would not be surprised if we see quite a small gap between me and second position, if I get pole, that is. I might not even do that, because this has been a very, very scruffy lap, it must be said. So one of the Michelin sign, then ready for the hairpin. I probably break too early for that. This has been an atrocious lap. My lap in free practice was so much better than this. Although I did have Ricardo Rossi in my way in that one. I did have to sit him up a little bit. He was going so slow through the, uh, the quick left right at the start of the second sector. Like he was just sat on the apex going really slow on like both of the apexes. Oh! The outside curb is still a little scary. It's not as scary as it used to be because I would have been on the floor on MHP 19, but it's still not pleasant. We've not made much inroads on whoever's in front of us either. So this has been a very, very bad lap. And we haven't got enough fuel to go again, so I might have to go out for a second stint. Well, it might be interesting to not start from pole if the lap's not good enough. Who is it ahead of us? It is Raul Fernandez. We all seem to end up behind Raul Fernandez. Oh, we almost went in the grass there. This has been atrocious. This has been an awful, awful lap. 2.14.7. Let's see if that's good enough for pole position. I doubt it. That was an awful lap. So somehow that was pole by 1.3 seconds as well, although I suppose it is quite a long circuit, so... 1.3 seconds isn't as much as it would be at another track. I mean, I suppose, you know, 1.3 is 1.3 everywhere, but obviously it's a longer lap, so there's more distance to make more time, if that makes any sense. So, Messiah's down in 8th, Foggia 6th, Fanati's 5th. I'm guessing they'll be right behind us after about the first corner. So, I'd actually forgotten that the, the race is cloudy. So, we've got our Cobra on the front row with us, along with Carlos Tatai, so... Actually, a full rookie front row. Sergio Garcia done 24th. Obviously, we've seen where Messia, Fodger, and Fanati have started. They will be right on us straight the way, I assume. So, we'll try and convert it to another win. We should have the pace because, like I said in qualifying, that was a, an atrocious lap and it was still over a second faster than what the AI could put together. Although, they are terribly slow in qualifying. In the race, usually a bit quicker. It's only a four lap race by the looks of the fuel, so it should be over pretty quick. I'm guessing that Fanati will be probably straight past those guys on the front row with me. Waiting for the lights to go out here. Lights and away we go. It's been a pretty good start, actually. One of the better ones. Wow, we've really left them for dust. Alcoba's holding on to his second, but he's getting about to get swamped by Fanati, Messia, and Fodger as we hit the brakes for turn one. It's gone in a little bit hot, actually, but I don't think they're close enough to be able to capitalise on that. No, they're not. So obviously, I've, I've picked the slightly harder compound rear, obviously, for the actual race, but the, the race is also cloudy, so that could definitely change things in terms of the temperature of the tyres. I'm guessing it'll be Fanati behind me, yes. Eight tenths of a second already as well, after that pretty good start. Into turn four. Track is sending out of turn four. I've not taken turn four correctly, I don't think, the entire weekend. Even in free practice, I ran wide through it a little bit. Running a bit wide through six, but we still made it stick on the circuit. Fanat, not Fanati, McPhee down in 20th. I don't know what's wrong with his AI in this game. Same with the Ranas as well. Their AI are just not good, but we've got a second over Fanati now. 
Not sure which Leopard it is behind him, but you can bet there's a Leopard there. Well, I could see them both. I'm guessing it's probably Fodger, considering Fodger started further up the field. But Messias usually had the better pace, so he might be in front of him. So at the end of the first lap then, 2 minutes 20.9, what is the gap? 1.2 to Fanati in second, Fodger third, Messias actually down in sixth place. So I was a bit wrong about that one. So coming up towards the line at the end of the second lap, and actually the start of the penultimate lap, 2.14.8, and that's in race as well, so that shows you how bad the lap was before. 2.4 seconds ahead of Fanati. So as we're about to start the final lap then, 2.14.5 on that lap, what is the lead now? 3.6 seconds. So we are so far in front of Fanati now. So coming up towards the line then to win here in Malaysia. 2.14.5 again on the last lap. You can see in the background, Messia, I think he managed to get up into fourth. So no, I was wrong. He was in fifth place actually. Behind Suzuki. So Fanati beating out Foggia then. That's a four point difference between them. So they're going to be very, very close going into Valencia. We'll have a, look, have a full look at the championship after this actually. To see what's going on with that battle for third in the championship. So Messia not having the best day there in fifth, although it's not the end of the world for him. Uh, the 658 boys not doing too bad in at fourth and sixth. Have a look. Alcoba actually ended up ninth, so that's pretty good actually. Uh, where is Carlos Tatai? After he started on the front row, he started second place, didn't he? Carlos Tatai finished 31st after starting on the front row. Then he was about five seconds off his qualifying time. Well, actually only three, because they were in the 116s, weren't they, in qualifying? Uh, 216, sorry. So 216... So, yeah, 215s at the front. So they were way faster than they were in qualifying. Makes absolutely no sense. Oh, so yes, in this championship, it is very, very tasty then. It has changed a little bit with who's in contention for it. But Foggia and Fanati are equal on points for third in the championship going into the last round. That is really what you want to see. And then Antonelli is 25 points behind them. So it's actually between Foggia, Fanati, and Antonelli obviously has the outside shot. If he gets the win, he can get the position, but both of those guys have to not score. Although it'd actually be a three-way tie if that happened with 242 points, which would be quite strange. It'd be interesting to see who actually gets the position if that's the case. I actually don't know because none of them have won a race, have they? And they've all got second. I'd say Fanati's probably come second more times than Fodger has, actually. Because whenever Fanati doesn't get second, it's usually Messia that will grab second. Fodger's had a couple of second places. Antonelli's had a few as well, so actually would be quite close to call. Uh, Suzuki's now out of contention for that spot, same with Mino. But those two are pretty close, only three points in it with them. And they're obviously only then a few points behind Antonelli, so it's more like they're battling for fifth with Antonelli and Fodger and Fanati are battling over fourth. So then the team's championship, obviously we established at the end of the previous race that Leopard have already won it. But 658 can steal second place if... Because they are within 45 points of me, of course. They are only 37 behind. So if I don't score, they actually can beat us. But they have to basically get 1-2, I think, for that to happen. But we'll head into Park Fermi, then the career hub, and we'll end off the episode there. So then another dominant win. And Fanati really doing his championship some good. Obviously by beating Fodger there. So those two, it's going to be very interesting to watch the battle between those two in the next race. I really, really hope they are together on track so that we can see what's going on with them. So as usual then, we gained 5,200 reputation points, which brings us up to 107,350. And in terms of the credits, we gained 6,151 like we always do, with 91,663 being our total now. So then with absolutely no notifications, I suppose that's what we're going to get at this point of the season, that is the end of the episode then, so I hope you've enjoyed that one. It obviously wasn't, they weren't the most thrilling races, I suppose, pulling away at the front. But it's a good way to end the season. Obviously, we've got one more race left, and then we'll be looking for a Moto2 contract. So that will be what's going on in the next episode. So only one race, but we will be sorting out all the stuff with signing for Moto2. And then in the episode after, we'll obviously make our debut in Moto2. So like I said, I hope you did enjoy that one. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. I hope you're all staying safe. And I shall see you in the next video.